What's good? We back with the boxing clinic and more. Y'all know what it is. Your boy CJ Goodfell and shout out to the homie Colossal Sports TV. I was on Corey Lee uh, boxing live stream and we had an amazing time. Always chopping it up with Black Horseman Promotions. Uh, the Cali Dig one came through. Um, Dr. Blick, Golden Glove Boxing. Shout out to him as well. We had a good time and I was looking at uh, Colossal Sports TV and he broke the news that um, you know Canelo Alvarez is done negotiating with Triple G. Um, he said that ship is sailed. I'm gonna link the article in the description from ESPN to Dan Rayfield. And he told Dan Oscar told Dan that they looking to negotiate with Danny Jacobs. And I told you guys he wasn't gonna fight no Billy Joe Saunders, bro. They already had Eric Gomez said that they already fought a runner in Arizona Lara. And they weren't looking to fight another runner in uh in uh Billy Joe Saunders after the David Lemieux fight. But if David Lemieux would have beat Billy Joe Saunders, they would have ran that belt right over to um Canelo Alvarez. They was trying to use David Lemieux as a as a bodyguard. You know, for Canelo Alvarez to get that belt from Billy Joe Saunders, once they seen Billy Joe Saunders was uh, revitalized, it was it was a wrap. That fight wasn't gonna happen. So Billy Joe Saunders could, you know, I heard you know Tom Loeffler say that that was Triple G backup plan, but you know Triple G got problems with the IBF. So with the IBF and the WBC, you know, grant him an exception to become undisputed with Billy Joe Saunders. That's yet to be seen. If Billy Joe Saunders is interested in the fight still that's yet to be seen as well too but um this fight right here man this this fight might make me uh you know step on a limb and watch this fight i like this fight from a stylistic uh standpoint danny jacobs being one of the taller longer middleweights canelo being one of the shorter and stockier and, and, and like stubbier uh middleweights right now and it's a good this is a good fight and i know people say well if magic man's lucky that's what i called him if so lucky was gave danny jacobs all that problem what you imagine canelo do but you got to remember so lucky is six one you know he's matching danny's height and length so he was able to land those right hands it'll be very very interesting if they negotiate this fight for september 15th mexican day independence weekend excuse me um it's a very, very interesting fight. It's a very, very appealing fight, in my opinion. Um, it's a fight that I'm very, very interested in. It's a fight that's been talked about for a while. And, you know, if you were to ask more more people that was non-Mexican and non-biased towards Canelo Alvarez and just caught it down the middle, most people would have took Danny Jacobs. But since Danny Jacobs' last two performances haven't been so hot, I think this fight is a little bit more closer, especially with Danny Jacobs coming off as of two subpar performances. He clearly beat Luis Arias, but he didn't do what he's supposed to do to Luis Arias. And then I thought he lost to Magic Man Lucky by one point. That wasn't his greatest uh, fight as well. And, you know, Canelo Alvarez coming off a one-year layoff. So it all makes for an intriguing matchup. I mean, it makes for Canelo to fight his first biggest foe. And, and it, because it kind of hurt that he picked one of the weaker foes right now at 160 as far as the top guys. Because I'm not saying that Danny Jacobs is the weakest. Some people believe Danny Jacobs is the top guy. But Danny Jacobs just came off a shitty-ass performance. But it doesn't hurt that they both with with, uh, with HBO. You know, so that makes sense right there. This would be a solid, solid fight. Who would I lean towards? I don't know. I think I, I think I would kind of right now kind of lean towards it being a 50-50 match and probably lean towards Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs is a big fighter, but Canelo Alvarez has more, you know, loose loose hips and a little looser torso and slip and slide. He got better defense. But it would be very, very um, interesting to see if actually if Danny Jacobs actually listened to Andre Rozier and actually box and don't press for the knockout and just let his boxing ability do the talking. If he could fight like he did versus Triple G, he might end up putting uh, Canelo Alvarez six feet up under the ring. But if not, if he reaching, if he pressing, if he if he if he if he really trying to go get it and, and trying to press for attack, it's gonna leave Canelo to counter him all night. You know, he gotta really box and be Danny Jacobs and not press. And like I said, it's interesting, man. This is Dan, this is Canelo Alvarez's first, you know, real test outside of Triple G in the middleweight division. You know, this this is one of them guys that ain't like that ain't real bland. Who ain't just straight up and down is gonna come and attack. Danny Jacobs got some boxing ability. He got some height. He got some length. He got some speed. He got some power. This ain't this ain't Triple G, a guy that's limited in the speed and the athletic ability apartment that can just punch hard and just gonna walk you down. Danny Jacobs can can box side to side. He ain't the slickest guy, the best defender guy, but he got some speed and he got some real power. He's a real real big middleweight in size and stature, and he's bigger. Then when Gennady Golovkin came in as the ring at, in the ring as for Canelo Alvarez, so it's a very very intriguing matchup. You know Canelo fighting a, a black fighter 
that's not Floyd Mayweather, that's not done like James Kirkland over the hill fighting a guy that, that can fight. And it's interesting if he drag him out to Vegas or he want to drag and go out to NYC, he's probably going to be on the Vegas. And it'd be interesting to see how Eddie Eddie Hearns and Oscar De La, Oscar De La Hoya negotiate after Eddie Hearn, you know, after Oscar De La Hoya kept called the zone, you know, the next PBC two and threw some hating words. So it's interesting because Canelo got to fight a formidable foe. Gary Spike O'Sullivan won't cut it here, man. You know, and obviously they could have reached out to another HBO fighter, Demetrius Bubu Andrade, but I think they would probably hold Andrade in a more uh, decorated, harder fight. You know, he's a more decorated and a more skillful fighter at this point. He's undefeated. So I don't think they want to see him. And he's kind of been a little bit more active than he has been, even though it's been, it'd be, it'd be a year in October, but uh, he's been more active. And I think, you know, I think it's a bad matchup because Andrade is, is he, he more of a plotter, but he's just super athletic and super talented. And I just think they'd rather go for the older fighter, the shop worn fighter, the fighter that went to war with Triple G and also didn't look that good, you know, after uh, Triple G. You know, like he got all his faculties there. So, and also this gives Canelo Alvarez, you know, the ability to one up Triple G and say, look, I knocked this guy out or I beat the shit out of him easier than Triple G did. See, I told you I'm better than Triple G. Kind of make that, that triangle, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to tell Black Horseman Promotions, he was saying that, uh, shout out to Black Horseman Promotion. y'all go subscribe to the brother channel as well. You know, he was saying, what, what what do they have to gain in this fight? What does Canelo have to gain in this fight? And, that, and that's real shit. He really ain't got nothing to gain. There's no titles. It's just clout. It's just one up in Triple G. And it's pageantry at this point. Just, I beat him. Look, look, Triple G couldn't beat him like I beat him. I knocked him out, you know? So that's what it is, man. I got another video coming talking about that Canelo Alvarez and, and, and Triple G split, man. I just want to put some facts out there. I want to put a nice video together, you know, and uh, talk about some real trail boxing talk. And shout out to Blood uh, Blood Boxing Returns, man. He he did he doing a good live stream video as we speak right now. I want to hop on and continue to watch it. But like I said, this is a good fight, man. East Coast, West Coast, Midwest. You fall East, you East Coast. I fall East Coast. <laughs> My how high fans, man. I'm just talking, man. So I'm definitely excited about this fight. They might can get me to kind of you know order this fight almost, man. Depending on what the order card, uh, the undercard look like. But um, you know. With, uh, with Golden Boy doing some shady shit and Eddie Hearn doing some shady shit, probably keep my dollar in my pocket. But I definitely want to support the brother, uh, Danny Jacobs, man. He getting another shot or possibly getting another shot at redemption and really climb out that that whole pirog put him in and really shake that stigma off that he almost shook off versus Triple G and get that career to find a win. Pretty sure Al Heyman going to hash him out a good deal. You know, Eddie Hearn going to act like he orchestrated the deal, but... You know, Al Hammond going to oversee the deal. He know how Golden Boy work. He used to work with him and get Danny a solid deal, man. And I'm happy for Danny if this fight can happen. Hopefully, he get a fair deal. Hopefully, he can capitalize on it. Hopefully, Canelo can come and get a get a career to find a win. And it don't be controversial because every time he stepped up, it's a controversial win. You know, other than the Cotto fight, you know, most people saying the trial fight was controversial. Most people saying the Lara fight was controversial. You found some people saying the Cotto fight was controversial. So can he get a clear cut victory with no controversy and, and, and not having Vegas or Golden Boy behind him to, to push him over the hump? That's the question. That'd be the narrative in this fight. And then can Danny Jacobs finally win the big one or will he fold under pressure again? Um, hopefully he wins the big one, man. I like Canelo Alvarez before the meet situation, man, but it is what it is. But I did feel like he majorly improved at the Mayweather fight. So this is a good fight to look out for. Y'all know what it is. It's TBC and more. We're going to stay on the boxing grind, man. We're going to stay grinding, pushing these videos out here, man, and kicking that real trail boxing talk, man. Remember the source link in the description, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter links in the description as well. We gone.